Greetings family, this is Bomani and welcome to our Black Star Pan-African Community uh, public uh, meeting and uh, we're here to talk about um, this, the past, present and the future of our Pan-African Community that we have organized there outside of Winneba in Jahadzi and what I'm looking to do is share all of the public links from pictures, videos to uh, details of the community so for those who are not familiar with what I'm talking about, uh, just flow with me and take your time to look through and read through everything and you can also compare it to anything else that's out there. So what I'm going to start with is uh, start with our screen sharing. That's perfect. So screen sharing is uh, set and even though this is a primarily audio call, and so for those who can see it, can see it for everybody else uh, that's on a regular audio call, what I'm looking to read from is the newsletter itself. The newsletter is that email that was sent to everyone um, where it says MailChimp and once you click on it, it opens up into a presentation. All right, uh, family, uh, everything looks good. Um, uh, so hopefully everybody can see from either the screen sharing mode or from the newsletter from the computer. Uh, so uh, this is a continuation from the last conference call we had about um, over a month ago and this is a reschedule from the last two weeks that we weren't able to do conference call. Uh, so I'll combine this um, public call along with those that are act active members to give updates for the future. So uh, as we scroll down, uh, the first thing uh, you're going to see is a picture with us at the uh, Chief Palace and this is the foundation of uh, his, uh, his settlement and uh, once we met him, you know, it was in the building stage. Uh, so it's not one of the popular chiefs like uh, someone like the Ashanti uh, chief and things like that that have a big palace and all this other stuff. Uh, this is um, more in a rural area and more of the people that you build relationship with, uh, that you build from the ground up and you know you come together and work on a certain energy. So for the most part, uh, most most of the time you hear about people in Cape Coast, Elmina, Accra and so on and where we are in Jahaji, which is outside of Winneba, a chief like um, Nana Haiti that we're dealing with is you know, people pass by and because if you're driving along Accra to Cape Coast, you know, you're gonna, and it's about in the halfway point, you're not gonna think about what's on the coast, so you're not gonna even think about this area, but it's, I've driven by there for over 10 years before I even realized what was going on. You're talking about some of the most tropical, beautiful land as far as the coast to the beach, two miles and close to freshwater lake and things like that. Uh, so. Unless you do some exploring, honestly, you would not find what we're talking about tonight. Um, the land site uh, in Jahadzi, and you know, some people on this call have been there. Some people are going to be there on the next tour to Ghana in May and December, and some people are getting ready to build and things like that. Uh, but what we're talking about uh, is going to take you back to the summer of 2019. Uh, after we weren't able to work with another group of people to build the homes and build a community that we wanted to build, we just put our energy together just to get right to the point on this. And um, I reached out to the people that we have, you know, our contacts and our energy there in Ghana. Um, you know, from being there for so long, you end up just knowing people and understanding how the game works and everything. So I assembled the people that we needed to really just put together a land deal for us and that everybody is going to be working on the land deal, going to be working to benefit us to make sure we have land, we can build, we have our peace of mind, we can socialize, we can do a bunch of things we need to do without any kind of um, you know, bureaucracy, you know, that's the thing that you end up uh, dealing with. So that's what we have right now as far as uh, the Black Star Pan-African community and that's without, you know, and it's not without blood, sweat and tears and just being there in Ghana and trying to figure it out and working with so many other groups that talk all this stuff from popular groups to just groups that say, hey, uh, you know, join us and build a community together. So what you're going to find out that I have is this me just being un honest up front and being as a real person to you uh, because we're all brothers and sisters and it is
putting everything that I could possibly put together on the website and also I got additional emails and any document anyone needs, any kind of legal document, everything that anyone needs, whether it's on the email or WhatsApp, I have no problem sending you any of our information uh, because you need to have clarity before you get your mind and energy open to what we're looking to build. And if it was what we're doing was that simple, you'd have all of these energies and these communities come together and build. But the reality of it is you have to build a foundation dealing with people who have a certain like-minded energy. So unfortunately, when you deal with that, it's going to be, you know, some people are not going to be included. And that's when you deal with the frustration of people calling you out your name and from, from racist to this to that and things like that. But what we're putting together is based on us as a group of people who, who spend time traveling back and forth to Africa and say, hey, this is what we want to do. We want to invest our money in the community energy, not to separate ourselves from the rest of the Ghanaians in the town, in the, the community, or in the country, uh, but to put our energy together to offer assurance to those from the African diaspora that you can make your way to Ghana and you don't have to get caught up into land, land drama and get caught up into other things. You can come there, do what you need to do, get things for yourself built, and join an energy where we are putting our money together along with other people in the country and saying, hey, we're going to build this industry, we're going to work on this, we're going to, you know, because the goal of everything is to be, is, to, is for, honestly, there's freedom. And uh, sometimes you don't know freedom, you know, when all you have known is just oppression. Like life in America is oppression. It's, you know, it could be glitter, glamour, it could be nice, it could be fancy, you could be rich, successful, you can have a lot going for yourself. But your self-determination is not there where every day you breathe, you get up, all your energy is being contributed to the, to the greatness of future civilization of black people. It's being invested in your own people and things like that. And I'm just being real with everything I'm talking about. And that's why everything is out that way. People don't get confused with what we're dealing with. And everything that we're dealing with goes beyond politics, religion, and any individual or specific black culture. Since we have people from the African diaspora that also we have people that's born on the African continent in the group. It's just a group of black people that represent the, the black world that's looking to connect and invest in Africa. It's really a simple thing, and it's really just based on one literary concept, uh, the concept of corporate economics. And cooperative economics dealing with you know us putting energy together, farming together, building business together, setting up import export, reaching out to the rest of our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean and that side of the world, and say hey, Nigeria, keep this flight air piece going and keep that connection set up because this is what the great visionaries a hundred years ago you know talking about the Universal Negro Improvement Association led by Marcus Garvey was talking about, and now we are able to do this on a modern day time frame. So when you're reading and looking through what we're doing, it's an energy in, that's set up there in Ghana based on us in the diaspora to do those things, to make sure that any one of us that's a part of the community, that's a part of the town, we share what we have and no one goes without and everyone has a fundamental part in society to play as far as their contribution to civilization. It's like, you know, honestly, let's create my own social society on a 15 plus the additional 57 acres that we have and saying, hey, we're going to build the things that we need to build. We're going to create a different um, society as far as health, wellness, and also education. You know, since I've been a child, I've heard people complain about this wicked education system um, and just being a child and being here and being through it and then having a child and seeing him getting tortured through it, I realized that you know, when you put all of our skills and energy together, um, most of the background of people around are people that would, you know, with an incredible technical background and I always talk with them whether we were working in the, you know, in the Navy or working, you know, there at the airlines. And I say, what if we were to educate our children with all the things they need without them having to go to technical school, military, or go through the sham education system? We'd be a powerful people. And one of the people in our community will open up that energy and will share our knowledge and, and things that we have uh, to be self-sufficient and also to, you know, to compete in the world market versus just being a consumer or being people who, you know, 
are not clear about what we're doing. So this is just more than just us coming together as a community. The end game is what I just uh, mentioned as about freedom and making sure that we have an incredible opportunity for our children to not just go out there and fill out applications and get the mercy to you know to the racist oppressors and things like that and saying hey you know what? let me invest in our future so our children finish a certain education program they have all the education and knowledge that they need to be able to run major industries in the world because when you look at the situation of Africa we have the natural resources and things like that and everyone else have the industry and then we buy everything back that's taken from us for pennies on the dollar and make everybody else richer. It's really this, it's kind of like the brain drain, having all your education children and the best thing that we can say for them is take the scholarship to go to England, go to America, go to Germany, Spain or wherever, or take this academic uh, scholarship and the next thing you know you have the best of your minds gone from your country, your continent and things like that. So this also is an energy to redirect the brain drain, you know, uh, reconnect the, the best minds back into the African continent for the purpose of you know, nation building literally. Uh, so that's what the, the Black Star Pan-African community represent and it represent a collective effort that was put together to purchase land versus going and meeting the chief and saying, hey, we're still in Africans and we're pressing um, the African diaspora in, in America and we need for you to give us free land. I've seen many people take that approach. not saying that's exactly how they do that approach. But uh, it comes out somewhere along that line. You know, and I've worked with uh, one group, uh, Fianco, which the, the land that they were given was free. And I worked with another group, Garvitan, the land that they were given was super discounted. They just had stipulations. And both groups, I mean, these are large sums of land, hundreds of acres, um, and both groups, um, and the documentation was part of our tours and everything. So it's, you know, it's written and documented. But, um, and then, you know, you go to them now, there's nothing been developed for us as a people. It's just years and years of this waste. Uh, so if we're going to do this, you know, we have to give our all and, Personally, I learned from all of their mistakes because I was there with them. I was a person that could bring big groups of people together to travel with us. And, you know, that's you know, just like going to a, a certain hotel or going to a restaurant. You know, we have a big bus. We can drive by anywhere in the country and things like that. But it's up to that group to deliver on how we can connect, live, do business, and you know, and so on. Uh, so... A lot of things that I'm gathering is based on that and putting it together and we're still trying to figure certain things out but we've gotten a whole lot further than anything else that we have seen to where we have people building on the land now. Once we go back to Ghana in, um, in the next uh, over week, in the next 10 days, we'll be able to see more, a little more development and a better feel of the land as we go for our third time since the inception of the land uh, been reached out to and connected from September 2019. And as I scroll down uh, to the newsletter, what you're going to see is a map of the this, the first 15 acres, and it's plotted from 1 to 50. And right now, we only have one plot remaining, and that is plot number 18. And 15 was taken earlier. Uh, so, and you know, you may have one or two people that may need to make a move to the next phase and want to release their plots, and especially if their plot has not been surveyed, because right now we're looking to get everybody plots surveyed get everybody a lease and get them all the illegal paperwork so you can start building immediately. Uh, so all the process of doing that over the period of time, things have become clear to where we're there now, where someone can literally connect with us and start building within two, three months. Before that wasn't the case because, number one, you have to put the money together, pay for the land, you have to get all of the, the legal stuff taken care of, and you have to check everything out, make sure everything connects, you have to have your people look it over, and it takes a good time frame to do all of that. So now that we've done that now, we can just move to the express process. So for those who are coming in now, it's a little simpler. And if you give us about six months to about nine months, especially if people are paying for phase two, uh, we're going to have plots. Uh, we're gonna, you're going to be able to just start building within less than a year on the next phase. Uh, but we can't, do, we can't do much of anything because more payments have to be made on the land and we're, we're in a good situation where we can negotiate and work it out to get 
portion access to portion of land so those who already could start building. So we do have those are flexibility, but right now what we're looking at is for people to be open to phase two. And for those who are in our community group, I did post this um, 57 acre uh, plan of land. And I started working with the surveyor to lay out how the plots are going to look. And it's basically another 100 to 120 plots as far as residential. And it's going to be retitled as far as the numbers because we finished that plot 50 for phase one then. So our goal is to continue 51 and so on and, and go up to about 170. So it would be a total of about 170 residential plots equivalent between 70 by 100 and 80 by 100. Uh, it's one of those things that some may get a little bit more, some may just get a little bit less. Uh, I'm trying to get everything equal in that range to where it's between uh, 8,000 square foot um, one way or another. And some of us may get a little bit less and a little bit more. Um, and, and that's because the way the angles and things are cut and then streets and things like that. So trying our best to just whatever we we're pushing out and sharing to just follow through as best as possible. And then if anyone have any questions, they can let us know. But uh, this graph represent, uh, we're most represent right now showing 100 plots. And when you look at the additional space, about 20 more plots can fit. The next side is what we're going to have uh, for phase two. And I'm going to read out the breakdown of everything in phase two. Uh, yes, and phase two is well over 200 plots. Um, and when you add the extra seven acres, it comes out to about 228 plots. But uh, what I'm going to do is just give you a rough draft of what all of these plots consist of. You know, the 120, which is about uh, 30 acres of the actual uh, community out of the 57 acres, uh, that's uh, all for residential. So since there's no more plots really available, with the exception of one in phase one, that's what everyone else that's interested would have access to. So half of the community is cut for that uh, residential space on the left. And then the other half um, is going to be for a combination of, um, and then we're going to break it down in plots. And the plots are, as I mentioned, similar to 80 by 100 uh, or 8,000 uh, square foot. Uh, 20 plots uh, for a few different uh, groups of apartments, and that's for people that's looking to come join us for extended stay, people looking to work with us, people who we have made a contract or agreements with from different countries from wherever to come and do different things from farming, teaching, training, um, to do business, security, because you know, we have black countries all over the world and your goal is literally just to reach out to different you know, your, your folks all over the place and we're definitely going to tap a lot into the, uh, one of the more untapped energy and connection, which is the Caribbean islands um, and things like that. And that's uh, what, I, what I talked about with the uh, airpiece flight from uh, Nigeria. So when you set certain things up and you work in deals out with different uh, brothers and sisters in different countries, uh, you want to be able to provide as many things in the community as possible. And that way you can you know, work it out. And it's, it's, it's something popular and it's something that's been going on since beginning of this global world where people moving around and connecting. And just this is good because we as a people can share more of a global black culture and it's not just based on where we are specifically in Africa. Because if you look at the different countries and you can pick up so many unique things from you know from you know, so many different countries and so many different black people have so many different things that they can contribute. Uh, so I look at that as as a global situation where we're putting things together. Um, you know, that's like one of the, the big things that um, I talked to a, a private uh, group about when we're doing infrastructure and utilities. I was mentioning you know, for our brothers from Ghana that work with um, a group of brothers from uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and he learned about how they did the water system, and he took that up and shared that with other people of the unique way of this doing underground tank pump and filter catch water system or catch water rain system and things like that. Uh, so we have different climates in different parts of the world where we may have to adjust and learn different things. So, you know, that's what you're doing. 
um, and you're using that as a way to educate us and you keep a continuous education. So the, other, the additional buildings that you, you, you have, uh, 30, for, 30 plots for commercial, 3 plots for medical, 4 for education, 3 for maintenance, 10 for a combination of community, another community center, business center, park and security, uh, 30 to 40 plots for farming, uh, 2 to 4 uh, plots for community store. And so what you're doing is creating a self-efficient uh, energy there. And the biggest thing that we have is the, uh, the farmland. And, uh, and outside the farmland, what you're looking to do in the entire community is to plant fruit trees around the entire community. And encourage people to create a list of 20 different fruit trees. Um, and for those who are you know, from Jamaica or in the Caribbean or in countries like um, the Gambia and so on or just West Africa, you're familiar with all the natural trees and all the things that grow. And you're trying to create a rich environment. Uh, number one, you want to be able to breathe fresh air. Number two, you want to be able to use some of the the things that you're growing and you're you know, from combination of manufacturing to com combination of the sharing doing harvest with your community and going back to that social economic way of life of how we as a people do things from trading and bartering and, and also just you know the sharing in general uh, so that is a uh, unique and we have a few different people who have trees and things like that so you're trying to create a tropical uh, paradise and also you're creating somewhere self-sufficient where those of us that are, you know, I mentioned a maintenance um, building, you know, from, we live in a society where everything has to be maintained and from the machines you have to the place you have, so from having, like I have stacks of tools and my big toolbox from doing aircraft maintenance and I have other people, same thing from them working on their trucks, their vehicles or working around their house, they have all these tools and things like that. So you literally create an environment where we have tools, you have all the things that you need to maintain, to do work, and things like that. Kind of like going back to high school machine shop and things like that. You're learning to just be as self-sufficient as possible and not just being that way, but you're learning to also build it up to a certain unique skill. Like we're in a world of solar technology of taking on to a different energy, and so now we'll be able to learn more of the modern-day systems, how to maintain them, how to troubleshoot them, and how to provide service and support. Uh, so you're creating something where there's no limitation and everything is based on this education on us doing for self. And also this uh, 57 acre will be you know, literally just connected so for those who can see this on the screen sharing you'll see an entrance connection and that is I mean it's literally physically connected. Uh, so we're going to be working on trying to find ways to to put the whole graph of everything together and when we get a better drone shot or things like that, we'll be able to just create these more uh, more digital and a little fancier as far as this, let's just see how the community is, but the one that I'm showing you is a draft. We do have to reorganize the numbers and do a few other things, but just letting everyone know that we're moving to this direction, and we're moving to this direction ever since we started just kind of getting more things in place to have everyone legal paperwork done for the first um, 15 acres, which we've gotten a good amount of this started and for the next month or two we'll be able to get those things going so more and more people will be able to start building so as people are building we want to let people know that we, we do have space available uh, for them to pl plan out the future of what they're looking to do uh, so that starts by just you know, reaching out and we can just give you the getting started uh, email and also you know when you're on the website africafortafricans.org click on black star community and you'll be able to read from the introduction to getting started and there's links to the Facebook group page, there's links to the, the YouTube videos where you'll see us on the land, you'll see the land being clear, you'll see all those activities, and you'll see a whole lot more once you go and come back. So for those who are just scoping things out and planning it out, and that's what we're doing. So we're creating a, we're perfecting a system that's not perfected and making it to where that uh, you're not losing and you're not running into any drama and giving you the access to start building immediately and be able to just you know, be clear about what you're doing with all the support that you need from uh, utility companies to people uh, that you know do different building. Let me see what else I have on here. 
And I do have a sample copy of the lease. I have a few people I've been able to get a lease for, but that's uh, what we're working on to make sure that, um, as promised, everyone you have legal paperwork. So legal paperwork is land survey and land lease. And um, also we'll work on registration so we get final deed and things like that. Yeah. So this is a process that you know we have to just work together with our attorney and other people that we have to create all the legal stuff together. Uh, that way we don't have people misleading us and tell us that uh, you know we can't get legal paperwork for our, you know for our investment, which makes no sense. And also some of these things I um, have not put on a newsletter. Uh, so when I talk about the uh, plot survey for individuals and also the contract is not on this newsletter, but it's on a separate um, document that I'm showing for those who are following me with screen sharing. But let me uh, get back to the um, MailChimp uh, document. And it's just um, it's going over all of the, the basic things that you know you want everyone to be clear on that, that my goal is not to spend too much time on it um, since we just have it illustrated so clear for the last um, you know last uh, 20 months and I've improved on the details. Talks about the prices and uh, ultimately what you have to do when you click on the link and take you back to the website is the final page that's called getting started. Uh, goes through all of the numbers, uh, goes through requirements and all of the um, codes of conduct and moral situation. Like I explained to everyone, this is very cultural, conscious, and also um, uh, righteous energy um, because we as the people have to move in that path and we have some people who are not willing to move in that path and not ready to move in that path and, you know, I'm not going to say that they need to stay here, but um, we can only deal with certain type of energy of people. So make sure that you know you read through everything and make sure everything physically connect with you. And once you fill everything out, you're the one that determines if you're for this group because you'll feel the energy of say, hey, this is for me or this is not for me. Uh, as we scroll down, um, part of what we're going to be doing more in the future is the different uh, uh, committees that's on there. And as the paperwork talk about, uh, we need everyone to commit to a committee. We did have committees going for a while. We have to make certain adjustments. That way we can start just you know, focusing on the priority of just getting people the things that they need to get to be you know, organized and ready to build. But uh, we're going to be pushing more of that energy together, especially when it's time to really just work on certain specific uh, projects. So I'll read through the 10 ones that we have. Uh, one, business and professional affairs. Two, safety, security, and surveillance. Three, education, cultural, and social affairs. Four, sustainable energy and utilities. Five, medical and wellness. Six, planning and development. Seven, maintenance and landscaping. Eight, waste management and recycling. Nine, agriculture and livestock. And 10, uh, bylaws and homeowners affairs. And bylaws is another one of those documents that's on the uh, website link. And it's also one of the sign-offs. It's like the community overview is a sign-off, uh, which is basically all of the documents that you're going to read through on the uh, website. Uh, and that is there just to make sure that you're clear about your community contract and clear about what we are committed to. That way we can have no misunderstanding and things like that. Uh, a lot of times it's just in, instead of us just getting to work, it's just too much unnecessary drama. So that's what this is all about. Uh, it's all about what we need to do and get ready for the future. I would just recommend, honestly, everyone take time, read through these things, watch videos, be clear about what's going on, ask questions, and then when you commit, stay committed. And um, understand that we're changing the future of you know, what we're looking to do because we have a great opportunity and we also have to think the reality of it is we know we're not the only people uh, that see Africa as you know, the future for us. You know, we have other people that you know they're, they're doing the same thing they've been doing for a long time, uh, exploring the continent, and they're going to be there, and they're also your competition. So, what we feel like we won't do or not going to put our energy together, other people are doing it. You know, just in Senegal and the Gambia, from the Lebanese to different African groups to the Indians, the Chinese, and so on. I just see them; <laughs> they were enterprising and mobilizing and doing all those things. And honestly, you know, my opinion, which don't really matter, is they're taking opportunities away from black people in the African diaspora. But if black people in the African diaspora are not organized to take advantage of the opportunities, 
the different countries are not going to wait around, so it's going to be the same thing as usual. Invaders and exploiters are there to just do what they do. Uh, so if we want to pay a part in this, you know, we got to get ourselves ready, and it's great benefits in it. It's benefits as we as a people being able to just share what we need to share and change the dynamics of things. So that's just, you know, my breakdown of all the things that um, we're doing. So you scroll down to the news that it talks about September 2019 when I connected my good brother, uh, which is also my uh, tour guide, Kwabin Abaka, with uh, the chief uh, secretary, Ray Raymond Gomez. And, and then just being honest with everyone, all the people that I talk about connected in here, none of them knew each other. So myself here in Georgia orchestrated the connection based on the people that I knew and on different energy and connect them to work in our on our behalf and everyone agreed and that's how we've been able to get this done and sometimes you know we as a people just got to broker the right deal and that's the good thing about us as Africans and the dads with us on African content all we have to do honestly is talk and have that dialogue amongst each other on what we need to do a lot of times it's hearsay he say she say this oh black people in Africa don't like black people in America and all these things and you know, you're going to have certain stupidity like that, but it's like when you go down to the, to the, the foundation of it and you actually talk to people who you need to talk to and connect with, you need to connect with, you realize that, you know, we have the same thing and the same interest in common, and it's to build a future for us as a people and make sure that we have a future for our children. Um, and most of the people I deal with in business in Africa, we live, we have the same agenda and the same mindset. Um, and are you going to have other people that feel different? Yeah, sure. But uh, just like I don't waste my time with those of us that are not about what we're about in America, I'm not going to waste my time. Same thing in Africa. I'm going to find the best of us that say, hey, where's the black people need to come together, do what we need together, and build a future for our children and the future for our country and make our ancestors proud and, and, and do what we need to do as ourselves and be competitive. And that's what I'm looking to do. And it doesn't matter where you are in the world as a black person. Uh, if you're about what, you know, we're about, we just need to connect and, and do this together. And everything else that you're looking at is just the flow of the clarity of to connect you. And then if it connects you, let's talk more and let's add clarity because this is beyond just us as a group. You know, it's a global movement, and I have friends that's doing different things in different countries now, and everything everything is just open up more than just Ghana now, but Ghana is still the most important piece in it because it's the foundation. So now you can connect and if you're organized in Ghana, you can connect and do business. Your, your folks in Senegal, the Gambia, I'm t not just talking about Africans from the diaspora, but just our people in general, black African people, and things like that. That's why I've, you know, I encourage you know, people to like, keep on going. Don't let COVID-19 stop you. Don't let anything, these things get in the way. It's, you know, the devil is going to work hard, and you, know, you just got to keep doing what you need to do and keep fighting. So just go down to this newsletter. You, know, you see things like the Citizenship Conference with my good brother, Dr. Milana, which I met in 2006. And now here we are in 2020 and 2021 putting together a citizenship conference to help our people from the diaspora get citizenship, which... Uh, they were able to sign a few people, and a few of us are coming in Ghana. We're going to bring application, and they're going to work that process to us. And Ghana still is that only country that I can think of. And anyone else, you, you guys, please let me know um, if I'm off or anything on that, uh, whether uh, if I'm wrong about that. But Ghana is the only country that I personally know that allows you to come to the country and become a citizenship citizen based on your interest of pan-Africanism and African nation building. Uh, it's not so much that I have to have a DNA to say Ghana and things like that. Um, the countries that are doing that is that's an ingenious idea, uh, just like what Ghana has done. Any which way that you can orchestrate it, whether they do it both ways or one another way, it's a good way to get people interested. Uh, so uh, Ghana has that legacy and other countries that are coming along that are doing that and, and learning from what people in Ghana has fought for and everything, it's going to make us stronger. And I'm all in for connecting with those of us. Uh, as, you know, as just like when I went to Senegal, I connected with Brother R.J. Madi, and I went to the Gambia, connected with the Black, Black Acres of the Gambia family and a few other people. And most of the time I connect with people, but it's, you know, I'm 
most of the time it's just like a low profile situation because don't like a bunch of attention and things like that. The attention that we only want is the attention that people say, hey, you know what? And for us working on this, let's do this together. Let's communicate. Let's network. Let's support each other. And it not being about egos and about popularity and being a YouTube celebrity and things like that. And as we scroll down some more, um, just, just showing some highlights of us on land, us at business conference, us uh, in Ghana, and then all of the groups that we have had from 2006 to 2001 that show the foundation of us not just talking about we're going to come together, get land, and build a community, but going through the process, going through the networking, going to get into the country. Uh, go, you know, we have had business conference since 2007, and um, I know about land based on going to all the business conference that I've hosted myself and put together and inviting people that are attorneys, land commission, and listening to everything that they have said and coming back and playing the videos over and over and reading the information in Ghana as far as the legality and things like that. So myself talking about land is based on well over 14 years of experience and plus even I won't do certain things in Ghana because I have other representation from my consultant to my attorney to the chiefs that we have there to make sure that everything that we have going is good. Uh, so just wanted to, want to give us a few more months and we'll get so much further just like I was telling everybody a year ago just give us a few months and we'll be able to get this going and people will be able to start building and so on. So all the things that we've talked about and we've documented in these newsletters have came to pass from 2009, uh, September to now. And then the things that we've talked about on the previous project um, and our frustration, we have made it work for this one uh, to where people can build the kind of homes they want to build, one floor, two floor garage, where you're, you know, where the streets that you are, you know, it's not full with vehicles, but you can drive your vehicle and drive it into your house. Someone telling me to build a community, be a part of their community, and then later on they tell me that I'm going to have to park somewhere down the street and then, and then walk. And I'm like, you know, and it's like, then that's not, you know, explaining, telling me that I have to limit myself to a one-floor house or I can only use the buildings that they have. And or I can't get legal paperwork. I have to get their paperwork. I'm just being that serious, family. These are the kind of gimmicks that th these people try to you know, try to try to sell us. Uh, that group is called Garby Town, and I'm not afraid to, to call their names and everything. As a matter of fact, when you're online, you, you type in Garby Town, you see Garby Town is dead, and it's it's one of those things where you go into legal business with people and they do you wrong. You do what you need to do and tell people about them. So anybody want to look at what we're doing? Everything is clean. Everything is organized. You can go to the land. No one is shaking you down to pay this or pay that. I told people you can join a group and you can spend the next five years. And once you're ready to go, then you're ready to go. But you know, and things like that. Uh, so when people tell me that they can't get enough people or that they're not getting supported, you have to look at your business tactics, your practice, your the way you run business administration and things like that. Every single last thing make a difference. You know, and even simple things of people being difficult, saying, send me all the money, I can't take payments, all those things, red flag, or people say you can build this and do this and you change their mind. Like I can tell people, one thing about me, I'm going to record everything that we do, so I'm going to catch you in line. So I've, you know, so these are videos that we have had dealing with this other group. And I'm like, hey, I have a video of you telling us a whole different story and things like that. And then, you know, so that person and your people saying that, well, he didn't know what he was saying and all that stuff. It's like, let's just be adult and let's be professional about this. We're competing against the world stage. Let's, you know, let's not make these amateur mistakes. So that's what I've learned to do and that's what I'm sharing with everyone, especially with the, the, the phase two and the access to all that land that we have. So for those who don't know us, I'm showing them what we have done in phase one and once we're there in Ghana uh, next week, it is showing you more progress. So, family, uh, let me not uh, continue beyond that. Uh, so, that's the newsletter, uh, which is always available on the uh, website also uh, from, the, um, uh, from the main menu uh, below. It will say, click below to view all of our newsletter or join the mailing list. So, that's where you'll find uh, some of these uh, newsletters, the, the whole history of it. And some are similar information, some you know, 
change every few months a lot, lot more, but it's all updated our progress. So family, I'm going to put us back uh, in mute mode for those who have any questions to press uh, star six to unmute themselves, and we can just go to any of this information. I know that it's a lot more things I want to go to, but um, I don't want to keep us here because it's that much uh, information. All right, so family, this is Bomani Tamba, and you're in mute all mode. So press star six to unmute yourself. Uh, give your name where you're calling from, your questions, uh, your question, and then let's uh, go through it. And hopefully everybody was clear on the presentation for the newsletter to a few other things. Uh, after a while, you have to kind of go through this thing fast because there's that much information. But uh, let's uh, hear your questions so we can dialogue in the next 30 minutes about everything or anything that anyone needs to know and needs to be cleared about. A vibe family. Now, everybody, don't be all shy. Well, I just wanted to ask a question. This is Joyce. Hey, greetings, Joyce. Yeah, I was looking at that. I'm in phase one, but I was looking at that phase two uh, diagram of the homes. I think I think you said there will be 100 homes. Yes, yeah, uh, 100 plots, but we do have space to make it between 110 to 120. But what I was yeah. really had to do is we're so behind on all the things we need to share with everyone. I just want to share with everybody a draft of the direction that we're moving right. in. No, but I was thinking that it have to be so strict. It looks so strict looking. Can't they make it like a, a few cul-de-sacs and fancy it up a little bit? I like your idea. Um, um, uh, it's me and the survey designing it, so I'm open to all feedback uh, because nothing is set in stone at this very, very moment. The only thing that's set in stone is the 50 plots that we have. Not even the business center, the community center is set. Those things could be adjusted. So what you see there is um, I can, uh, you know, e even if you have some, some sample ideas, you can definitely share it. Um, we're at the point where everything is based on feedback. And, right, right. Um, it's just that it looks so strict looking. I mean, you know, you, can, you got your homes going this way, you got your homes going that way. There's like nothing. Uh, it looks strict. I mean, you know, fancy it up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that uh, uh, sounds good. And, um, yeah, we can definitely work on that and then also add the other part of the community, like 10 acres of that to the right side is the farming area. We want to give people access to get their farm on, like, immediately. Yeah. Okay, that's all I was thinking. Well, yeah, well I always uh, appreciate your, your feedback. You always have great suggestions and ideas. Thank you. All right, family, we have lots of people on this call. I'm hoping that everything is clear in the presentation and looking for some feedback and some conversation. All right, I'm just going to just watch the screen until somebody has something to say. Hello, it's Keisha. I'm calling from Boston, and I have a question. I'm looking at the site, and of course, I'm trying to read through some of the information. And um, my question is, if a person is not able to uh, follow uh, some of the code of conduct or is reflecting the values that is posted on the site. Is there another opportunity for that person to invest um, in the people or the property that will be built by maybe others that may share um, uh, the same values as the other community members? Uh, yes, I'm hoping that the uh, restrictions is not too uh, bad because uh, it's based on nation building. But uh, for black people who just want to invest in general, if uh, that's what you're talking about, who just see that uh, that they can build an apartment complex and they they can get a, you know, they can just work that out, that's perfect because we do need people from the outside to just do some of those things. It's the only thing is just you know we have to and as a community we're going to negotiate to get something from the deal to go back to the community. But yes, definitely looking for outside people, for um, black people uh, to literally just invest in what we, we're doing and for us to you know work with them in different ways especially when the time comes where we're going to have to do something about the uh, the beach 
we can't just let the beach just sit the way it is and just be natural and be in its natural habitat. We're going to have to invest in it to make it. You know, I'm not saying we're going to make it look like Negro Jamaica or somewhere, but you know, we have to think in the essence of that um, also. And for those who can build shop stores and build certain things, uh, you know, you're definitely going to look to have outside of your community members. So I'm trying to build a good relationship with what we have here in the African diaspora in America and so on. On a button, and you can de zombify 10% of the population of black people here. We're good to go in Africa, uh, but that's the hard thing from the trust to many other things. So, even people have been here fighting, talking to business people here for the last 20 years, um, even before we started going to Africa, and they're telling you about kings and dictators and, and tribes and things like that. And, you know, and you know, like they're telling a fairy tale about Africa. Like if they go there and do some investment, some dictator is going to take their land and imprison them. And all, I mean, the story is just unbelievable and never stops. So we're just doing our best to get people to open to investment and things like that. So um, we've came a long way with what we're doing. And, you know, we've been able to get a good energy because we have 60 people that's a part of our group, which is, still impressive and still can't believe we had that much people um, but it showed me that when we wanted to do the work people are going to come so more and more people have been showing interest so hopefully you and other people which you know which regardless how you look at it are open to doing things with us because uh, I even have other people in other countries that want to do things with us so we, as long as we keep it to where we can do business together as a people we can all fit in where we need to fit in. Thank you for, for giving me an answer. Um, one other question I have. Um, so with regards to individuals who are interested in um, investing in the, the members uh, or the individuals who would like to live amongst, um, you know, the community members um, and investing in that particular property, uh, when do we get uh, people – would these would the individuals get like a separate newsletter um, regarding okay how you, uh, individuals can um, invest in the individuals living in that community or invest in the properties itself? Yeah, I don't have any newsletter to share with anyone. Anyone that want to do anything with us, honestly, they'd have to just call me and we talk. Honestly, um, what I have is this public information, and from there, individuals have to communicate whether they want to publicly when they, whether they want to get a plot of land with us or whether they want to do something else. That way, it's a, everything has to be a direct communication. Uh, but everything that I have that I can share with anyone is is put in a newsletter, and the newsletter to everything else is like right there on our website uh, to where anyone can access. But if I find anything else that we have later on, the same thing I'll do. I'll just put it in newsletters and put it in an email, post it on Facebook, do uh, YouTube videos, and, you know, I do my personal best to get it out. Um, even when I'm traveling and I'm connecting with other people that are investors in business people I'm, and I'm recording them, I'm sharing what they have and putting their information out as best as possible. And it's just all for us to connect and work it out and figure it out together as a people. Thank you for uh, answering my question. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Chaz, I see that you have your, your camera on. Let me know if you have uh, anything to share, Chaz. Chaz is one of our vice president, and um, this, oh, you know, this, this is a public call, but just want to know if there's anything that you want to share that maybe I've left out, and, or just any of our just other members in general. You know, you know I mean, I'm not a person about, you know, about titles. Any one of our group members who like to share their experience about what we've been doing, things like that, uh, just trying to generate a recorded call for all of the people that's been following us since we started talking about the Black Star Pan-African community. Um, and just want to let people know that we're building right now, which is, and we're getting all the legal paperwork and things like, like that. So everything that we've been sharing with you, we've been following through and doing the best we can do in keeping it up with everyone. Anyone who wants to be a part of the actual WhatsApp group page just needs to fill out some of the, the paperwork and let's talk and let's add you to what we're doing because we're going to have a whole lot of updates coming up in the next few months. I just wanted to ask one more question. Uh, sure, go ahead. Um, 
with the original bylaws. Who came up with those bylaws? Uh, the uh, Homeowners Association and the Bylaws Committee. So the committee of about seven of us. I wasn't a part of that group. Uh, but um, are, are those same people still in the group? Uh, unfortunately, no. Some of them are. Um, some of them are, and that's what we have been through. You know, and, and I appreciate people because people have been helpful to put things together. But you know, we are. It's, you, 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 you've been watching what we've been doing. We're slow you know, from the, from, the, from the people that we have in Ghana to everything. But but also, have you seen things have been progressing, even you know, things like that. So um, it's just. It's hard to just please everyone, so you just try to do your best. But I just really appreciate everyone that have joined because everyone that has joined has made a level of contribution, even if it's a loss of their deposit uh, to where they've joined groups. Uh, so the bylaws and all these things we can always talk about, but um, it's still you know, those are still fundamental group members. Um, but anyway, uh, let me know if you have any questions about the bylaws or, or anything or if something is clear or not clear in the bylaws or if we, we need to like revise it. Oh no, it's, it's clear to me. It's just that I, it's, it's just one little thing in there. I, I just um, kind of troubles me, but... <laughs> oh, go ahead and let me know. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you going to send me a separate message? You know, like they say, don't ask, don't tell, something like that. Yeah, we do, um, beyond the bylaws, the bylaws are just the homeowners and stuff, and it's it's more like um, a foundation. But in the community overview, the community overview have um, the people who are not, you know, or not, where the community is not open to, since it's a black Pan-African family community, and it's just honest and real about that. Uh, so, uh, and things like that, and, you know, so for people into interracial relationship and things like that, it's just not what it is. Uh, even the tours that we do, it's so, you know, it's like it's, you know, uh, you know those things and well, all those things are based no on problem. what members yeah. agreed on. Okay. Yeah, I got no problem with the interracial business. Oh, I'm just using uh, a, <laughs> an example um, of some of the things on there, and then also just you know, letting people know that uh, we're not, um, you know. We're not limited by religion and politics, you know, because we're global African people. So, you know, you're, you're trying to put the clarity of those things in words as much as possible. Uh, that way people are clear. And then, then people know that we're not into any funny people business and things like that. Um, so, um, and then people know that if you're into what you're into, you're not here to knock your hustle. We're just here to tell you that the people in this group agree that this is the way they want to live as a group of people and they want to define their destiny and things like that. And so some of those things have not gone well with people. And trust me, I've heard, I've been called all kind of nasty names, <laughs> from racist to sexist to bias to this to primitive to... Um, and, Fine, I tell them them calling me those names is not going to change anything and insulting me and things like that. But it's like I'm not the only person that's a part of this group, and I have to agree with a bunch of other people, and that's what we agreed on. Yeah, but I'm saying that I'm saying that I, I asked um, who made those bylaws. Like you said, a lot of the people um, who made the bylaws are no longer in the group. I, I'm not arguing with it because I, you know, I know what I am. <laughs> but I'm just thinking. Yeah, the thing of it is, uh, is it, regardless of who wrote it, everybody agreed with it, including the majority of people that's in the current group. But it was just a section of group of people. Half of them still here, other half have not gone on. But we have also have other people that are not part of the group help with the, the foundation of the paper. You know, because you're looking for people who have skills and background to write in certain things. So the people oh, that you see in detail of bylaws is, so that was really just trying to find the best people to say, hey, help us structure the group and things like that. Uh, so, um, and then, you know, for the new people, you always ask them, do you agree with that? But it's not the bylaws. It's actually the overview, which I wrote based on what people were asking me about. That people were asking me about they don't want to be around this type of people. And they're also saying that I want to build this kind of house. I don't want nobody telling me I can't build my house. I'm a garage. I don't want nobody telling me I can't get legal paperwork. So it's more of the community overview, which is the most important thing. Um, because it's telling you, 
you know, the way of, uh, we, uh, we have to move as a people, which is righteousness. You know, it's telling you to respect your neighbor and don't, you know, don't wait till your neighbor leave out and go to his work and you go over there and go mess with his wife. You know, like even things like that. In so oh, many I, words. I, uh, I, I agree with all of that, but I, you know. <laughs> Well, what you're going to find with me, Opal Mani, is I don't bite my tongue. I let people know what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what we're doing. And we're trying to do it nicely because people get so upset and quick and take things personal. Now, I remember being on a tour bus, on the last tour, and I was talking about interracial relationship, and one person kept on looking at me. <laughs> and, and I had to tell them, I was like, yo, this has nothing to do with you. <laughs> I was like, just like the last time we had something like that, no one was looking at me like that because no one was in an interrelated relationship. So you're telling people that, yo, it's, you know, it's not about, you don't take it personally. Like we, it's, we, it's a group of us, and we're trying to discuss what we need to discuss. And just because you decide you're going to marry a white person and leave your white person home to say you can travel with us because you know you're not going to be able to bring that person with you, don't expect us to change our tune and things like that. And then things like that. But like you mentioned, Joyce, you don't know, bite your tongue. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to find a real black people who understand these things. And also you're trying to get black people to understand, hey, we have issues. Let's come together, talk, solve the issue, and move forward. And then at the same time, too, when we move to Africa, let's look out for each other because we are very welcome in the, all the African countries that we have. But we understand just like if you move into different parts of the U.S. and, and wherever you go in the world, you may have people target you. So let's look out for each other. Uh, so you're just trying to get to those fundamental of um, conversations and, and for us to just you know, do what we need to do for each other. All right. Yes, Chaz. Bomani. Uh, yes, greetings. Yes, this is Dr. Kubi, New York. Long time. Long time, long time. How are you? <laughs> I didn't forget you. Yes, the question. Um, did you say something about when... I know it's going to be a while before you all start getting schools and all that stuff together. Did you say that you will be recruiting um, diasporas that will probably be living in Ghana that's not in your particular, you know, group in that area, staying where you all are staying? Exactly. Ed educators, teachers in general. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah. And I appreciate um, uh, you just inquiring about it. Let me just try to see if I can do a quick overview on that. Yes. Clear on. So the, the goal is what you're trying to do, you're trying to find all different means to make the community work. So part of making the community work is basically saying that, hey, we're going to build an apartment situation to where uh, you can recruit people, whether it's for six months or one year, or people who just have the, the energy that say they want to come to Africa and they may not just have $50,000 or whatever the amount of money to get there to build a house and everything. And they just, you know, they want to be able to have some accommodations and be able to work with us as a people. Like, you know, it's like maybe someone is, uh, you know, is a mechanical engineer and we need someone to, you know, where we can record a course with them and then for them to teach and things. You know, you want to be able to provide that. So you're trying to not limit yourself to the people that you have in your community. Just like if you can get people who are willing to send your children over to be a part of, uh, you know, the group that build farming or build certain things, you'll do that. So and none of these things are in concrete, but that's what the goal is to do. Uh, so okay. you can have from investors to build a complex for that and for us to work out certain things to make sure that they're accommodated. Um, I'm definitely open to that. Okay, that, uh, that's still, that, that applies also to a diaspora that's uh, maybe living there at the time also? Yeah, the thing of it is, yeah, I mean, I'm one of the people that don't limit themselves to, to, I'm trying to, you know, you're trying to find, honestly, you're trying to find the best people in the world, the best black people in the world. Right. And then he's trying to get also a combination of different people from different places so we can also share the culture of where we're from with each other. Uh, so it's definitely more for um, folks in the African diaspora looking to do a big reach out to the people in the Caribbean islands which may have a good access now to come to Ghana. A lot of times uh, they haven't been able to get on flights. Like, you know, for those of us who live in America and we have American passports, we can go to Africa anytime. For those of us in the Caribbean, uh, you have to get access to transit visa from America to Europe or go to somewhere in America or Europe or Canada to get to Africa, and it's been, it's been limited. Uh, so you open that, but, you know, it's, you're opening up to every, everyone, um, black folks in America, um, especially with, with people who have incredible skill background. Um, like, if, you know, like, say, example, someone is a, um, a training background as a pilot or mechanic, 
and then you know we're trying to get access to simulators to train students because uh, the world is going to be flying all over the place and things like that. That would be ideal, and you make the accommodations, you make the deal, you let the person know, hey, we can do this on this end of the money, and you may have to put this together, and we can get you a ticket, and so on, uh, based on agreements. And in a more developed program, but you're trying to create those programs because some people you're going to have to make that deal with to get some of the best of us in that situation. You may have somebody that's retired from the military and just have 30 years of great skills, and you may have to just work certain out to convince that person or just make it open to them that, hey, we have children in the community that normally wouldn't learn these kind of skills, and we're trying to make it more open to, to where the children in the rural areas and like countries like Ghana can compete more in a global world. Right. I, yeah, like I said, I was uh, yeah, asking that because I'm in the education field, and so a lot of people that I know have already retired, and other people are retired by the time all this, you know, come together. And some people would like to come and stay for like three or four months. Others want to stay, you know, come and go. And then by that time, I should already be down there on the ground as far as living. That's the goal for us to go back to stay. You know, so our, our things are being arranged as we speak. So that's why I'm asking all that, because I do have a background in that and in business and finance. So it's a lot of us with a lot of those different backgrounds. And, you know, I tell you, my husband's got in, so... <laughs> we just, we, that's why we're monitoring, we're monitoring you and see what you're doing and everything too because this is going to be some kind of way I'm going to be involved with you whether it's through investment or even helping with the kids when it comes to like volunteer or whatever so that's why I keep in touch with you from time to time when you hear from me because I'm monitoring you too <laughs> yeah I really appreciate you you know we're yeah. we understand that um, that's the way it's going to be so you know we're just trying to since we're kind of traveling in Oakwood it's trying to <coughs> where we are we're trying to do and just keep on giving updates and work yes. with but uh, but definitely that's one of the things that um you know I was t- talking to one of my brothers about um today about about professionalism and skills I was explaining to him that we have people from the Caribbean islands that some of them have been in, in an industry like you know we have people in the south some of them have been in position of management of from from governments to cities to mm-hmm. states and things like that and they have you know management and organization background is very vital to many operations, and you know, sometimes we don't look at it until we go somewhere where those things are not in place. Right. <laughs> you see the right, right. 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 And I had to, <laughs> yeah, I had to laugh because when I talked to you a few months ago, not on the phone. Yeah, I think it was on the phone. But I was asking about whether or not you're going to get a chance to see the bag family, and then you popped up, and I saw you, and I had to fall out laughing. And I said, "Oh, you met them." Yeah, I didn't want to say because Rick, because Rick, Rick, he was he was born in Georgia, and then he went on when he was a kid to Chicago. I know his area because it's not too far from me, and I know you in Atlanta. I'm from Savannah originally, 235 miles, so I know all the places. And then my family had the farms and stuff when I was a kid, coming up in the 60s and 70s. So I know a lot about you know that too. So that's another aspect. So that's why I said, oh, he finally met Rick and Cynthia. Yeah, so, perfect. And it was my, one of my good brothers that did most of the reach out, which helped. Uh, so a lot of times. Right. Uh, also help, but uh, sometimes I go places and uh, say I'm going to go see these uh, see certain people, and we don't do it now. We feel real bad, but it's that schedule. Right. So uh, I, my goal was not to say anything to anyone. Uh, so, but we did meet R.J. Mahdi, which is perfect uh, in Senegal. We did right. meet Black Acres of the Gambia. Yeah. Um, in uh, in uh, the Gambia, so which is good because those are the energy of people that we really feel. You know. Uh, I know. I think too, when I'm, if I'm going to network, I want to network with people that have a you know, wonderful background and people respect them and people. Right. We got enough people that's doing the wrong thing and the opposite. So I totally agree with you. So that's why exactly. from time to time, I don't bother you all the time, but every now and then you will hear from me. And, you know, thank you so much. Keep up the good work also. I definitely got your back. All right. Well, well appreciate it. Uh, perfect. And we're getting there, as you can see, little by little. And look to show people a lot more once we get to Ghana. Um, yes. Yes. I mean, um, in uh, next week. Yes, yes. Even go back to Africa. <laughs> I'm following him too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, um uh, he'd been to Ghana with me. Um, in one yes, of the that's what he said. That's yeah. You were one of the ones that you know had him interested in you know doing what he's doing, and he's doing a great job. Also, Dinus. I follow him also. Yeah, Dinus. Um, a good brother. Um, um, and yeah, um, yeah. I remember having a conversation with him saying, "Yo." Don't just go to Africa and enjoy it. Take some people which you do some business, do some investing. That's right. Make your money work for yourself. And that's all. That's the thing I'm always going to say to any black people. If you're going to put the work in, 
invest in yourself also and invest That's right. in yourself. And then, you know, people are going to support you um, because our people, if you build it, they'll come. But if you just run, a, run your mouth, they're just not going to support you. So, um, you know, and, and as people, as all of them can see that they're very popular and people are feeling them because they're willing to put the yes. work. Yes. So, again, thank you. And I had to run my mouth because it seemed like nobody else was going to talk other than two persons that talked before. So I said, you know, I'm long-winded. But I had to just say those few things and then stop and let it be open to everybody else. I will appreciate it. Um, <laughs> and uh, that gave, you know, gave me a little energy to give clarity of what we're really doing and everything. So perfect. So that works. So thank yes. you for your and your energy. Thank you so much. And let, let my students say, everybody else should talk and don't be scared. <laughs> there, you go, there you go. So perfect. So family, the line is still open. Let's <laughs> um, uh, press star six to meet yourself, and then uh, let's uh, talk. All right. So family, uh, we're talking about the Black Star Pan African community. Um, talking about a um, future of billing this uh, 15 plus 57 acre community uh, which we have a whole lot of videos and pictures to show you the foundation if you've never seen land from the bushes to being clear to being set up for building and houses going up uh, that's what we're here to share with you and let you know because um, that's what we had to do and by us doing that we've educated each other uh, Brother Chaz, uh, would you like to share some words or anything? Um, not tonight. I right, so family, I'm not sure. We have a lot of people on this call and um, trying to get some questions or anyone to share any information. Uh, we're not going to have too much of these calls. I'm um, doing them less and less. Uh, but um, you'll keep getting information after information. And the next set of private conference calls we're going to be having is talking about more of our utilities and infrastructure and financial layout to develop our community in general. So a lot of what we're doing uh, deals with critical thinking because um, you know, we all have to put our minds together to come up with a solution that works for all of us. And um, I'm one of those thinkers and decision makers, but don't want to make decisions for all of us. Uh, everything we do is a group energy, whether it's just a board group energy or a few of us coming together. Mamani, I, I have a question. Uh, sure, go ahead. Those uh, folks who are building now, in the process of building now, have they uh, decided to put in uh, uh, cisterns, you know, you know, for water catchment? Uh, yes, uh, that's what they're discussing, uh, especially since we've been beating that, uh, across the people over and over, uh, letting them know that you know there's a water issue in Ghana, and the best thing to do is just have a one-year supply of water that you can just use like you're used to using water. Uh, so uh, the group did agree uh, to doing it as far as uh, the Kingsley group. Uh, so they're going to be working with the builders to put those systems in. So I'm looking forward to recording it and sharing it with everyone else uh, because it's something that if we're in a country that like you put in your report that rains as much as it rains in Ghana, why are we depending on you know wa water pipes and everything? Happy to be able to you know for us to talk and share with everyone that this is the best solution for us based on what we know of as far as Ghana. But I I know that Carmen and them. I'm just wondering, you know, are they making it part of their um, uh, their building site? Uh, you know, whether they've decided already, you know, decided yet to make it part of their um, building site? Uh, they have been communicating with the the group that uh, we introduced them to, uh, so they're working it out, and their their builder say that he's open to learning. So we're about to, you know, push this thing to another level where we're going to encourage people to do that. Yeah. I just I hate to see like 
I think one of our members, I'm not sure if she's on here, that just moved to Ghana, Shelly. She was telling me that she has no water already. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, and then one of our other members, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm hoping that you can. There is you go. Yes, my brother. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can unmute him. Uh, yes, my brother uh, uh, Charles. Uh, um, if, if you can be on standby to share with us the reason why we need to be sustainable in Ghana and your experience. Yeah, hello. Is that Bomani? Yes, this is Bomani. I'm here with my, my other brother, Charles Lohman. Me and Charles Lohman were talking about um, the, 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 the system, the water tank system. Uh, he sent me a diagram of one above the tank, and me and him have been talking about the underground tank and, you know, above ground tank. So it's the water system that could be built regardless before your home start or after. Uh, it, you know, it's you know, very universal, but the thing of it is, you have unlimited supply of water. But yeah, share with us uh, your experience in, in, in Ghana and what you see as far as not being sustainable and having all this backup power generator water, all the stuff that we talk about. Well, as you know, Bamani, I was with you guys on the tour, December 2020 tour, and I stayed back, you know, um, for an additional uh, four months. And, uh, you know, while we're at the hotel, we are kind of insulated to uh, power outages and water issues that, you know, the different hotels we're at. But when I moved, I stayed in a chalet Botway for about maybe 20 days, and that's when the reality kicked in that, you know, the infrastructure was really weak. And it wasn't really too, too bad in a chalet Botway, but when I moved, out of there, it was the Airbnb, but when I moved out of there and I went to West Ligon, a really nice neighborhood, that's when it really, really got bad. The power outages, sometimes it was all like three in a day. Sometimes they would go out at night and they'd come back early in the morning and then they would go out about maybe noon and sometimes come back in the afternoon and the water... <laughs> was the main one because, I mean, you really can't do anything without water. You can't even make a cup of coffee or anything. You know, there's times when I was in the shower and I was soap up and <laughs> I got I to gotta dry off all the soap and come out and hunt down a caretaker. After a while, I got fed up. I just started to, like, catch water in the, 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 the one and a half liter bottles and just rinse off. I just gave up. But I, I stuck it out, though, you know, but... Um, as far as living in Ghana, the water supply and the grid is not reliable because in Ghana, they, sh they sell a lot of their power to Ivory Coast and Togo. I think they call it load sharing. And as far as the water is concerned, the particular uh, uh, property where I was staying in is just that the owners just, you know, they, they just didn't care about, you know, um, preserving water in the sense where they had a borehole and the borehole was dug years ago, and um, it was just a matter of for them to just um, connect the, the electricity to the pump so they could pump the water out into the poly tanks on the roof. And uh, the lady just wouldn't pay the electrician, and she wouldn't pay the plumber. She just mm -hmm. refused to pay them. So they kind of like just got fed up and just, you know, walked off the job and called it a day. And um, I remember even the borehole company who who did the who dug the borehole they came back and did a fracture and there was a lot of water in there but she just wouldn't pay a hundred cds to the electrician for him to wire up the borehole to a pump to pump it to the poly tank and it was the same thing with the with the plumbing issue she just wouldn't pay whereas like a lot of the other properties on the street they had uh, water constantly they had the backup power, but this lady, when I confronted her about the power going out, she was saying like, "Oh, I'm, I'm, I've, I've imported a generator from America." And I said, "What, what the hell are you talking about? Every corner in Ghana sells generators." <laughs> well, what the hell are you talking about? You've imported one from from United States of America. Everywhere sells generators, and and the, the generators they are affordable. Then I even tried to start schooling her about maybe getting solar panels and. She just looked at me like I was crazy. So when my time expired, I, I just hauled my ass back on home. But 
<laughs> I, I plan to go back out as soon as I possibly can. But you know, a lot of lot of lot of places that you will rent will have a borehole on deck and uh, backup power generators. But that particular lady, she just wouldn't invest. She just didn't care. There was a lot of issues in the building where you, there were a lot of plumbing issues. I mean, I even had an electrical issue in my apartment where I couldn't run the fan unless I had the lights on all day long in the lounge. And that would eat up all a lot of the power, and it would just generate unnecessary heat for me too. So I couldn't get any any kind of cooling down in the lounge, and there was no AC in the lounge. There was only AC in the bedroom. And basically, really, when you do run the AC in Ghana, it costs a lot of electricity if you're paying, because I, I, I stayed in that particular apartment in West Ligon for three months, and I spent at least 270 CDs on electric. And I never really had a lot of stuff going on in there. I, I had electric kettle. I didn't really watch TV unless I had company. I'm not really interested in TV. So I just had the fan in the bedroom. I would let that run all night. And um, uh, it was just electric kettle and the lights on at night. And uh, I spent a 270 CDs. As for cooking, I just went and bought me a one burner gas stove. And that lasted me more or less until the end. I had to fill up back the tank a, a little halfway before I left. But, yeah, you're going to have to uh, have a, a sustainability plan on deck if you're going to move to Ghana or you're just not going to – it's just not going to be a comfortable transition for you. You know, um, for me, I wholly and solely believe 100% in solar panels. And as a second backup, maybe a diesel generator. You know, that's that's what I believe in. You know, when I was growing up in the Caribbean, we didn't really have a lot of solar panel type of setup out there. They did exist, but they were super, super expensive. And, you know, growing up in Jamaica, we used to do have a, a lot of power outages and water shortages and Believe it or not, in Jamaica, we get a lot of rainfall, but the, the, the reason why there's water shortage is sometimes the water commission just doesn't have enough storage containers to store all the water they need, and that is a critical issue. And I really don't think they really dig boreholes in the Caribbean. I think that's the thing that I could advise the government about doing. I don't think they really dig boreholes. Yeah, my, my, my stay in Ghana, my four months there was great, other than, you know, the power outages and the the, um, the water issue. Other than that, it was, it was a good time for me. You know, I learned a lot about the different tribes of people and, you know, kind of how, you know, to negotiate, a, you know, your way around, you know, dealing with the Ghanaians and, and everything. And all I could say, if you're doing any kind of business there, you Make sure you got everything in writing because people will tell you, you know, it, it was this way, and then tomorrow they will tell you another story. But if you have it in writing, you you, you got them dead to write. So that's just my little experience in Ghana. Well, appreciate you, brother. And, um, yeah, that's it, man. Every deal that's being made or made, everything, you know, you have to get in writing. The same as how we do business, people, because, and that's to get you to this Practice those things. Other than that, if you don't have something right and you don't have a deal. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, it, it used to be in, in the good old days that people would shake hands and, hey, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Now you got to get lawyers and you got to have people sign things and things like that. Other than that. <laughs> so, but um, nevertheless, uh, you know, and, and that's our situation of building this community trying to make sure that we have the right people in place and make sure that everybody who gets paid or agree do their job and work and things like that. And that's, for some reason, it's a fight with us as a, as a global people uh, where we have to go through that. But um, in this case, you know, the people that we have in this uh, project, we're, you know, we've been working together for a while. So things in the, those that we, who didn't make the cut just didn't make the cut. Uh, so, but... Yeah, let's uh, be, um, 
you know, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's agree to agree and not be disagreeable. Um, trying, trying to get Chaz, uh, the, the philosopher, to come on and say something, but he refused to unmute himself. <laughs> hey, how y'all doing today? We're agreeing, Chaz. Doing good. Chaz, Chaz, one of our vice presidents. Say some good words, my brother. Man, I, I mean, um, I just, I'm just an umpire in this life, man. I just call him as I see him. You know, what I mean, you know, we're going over there because, because of the brain drain. We're just returning the brains back. That's all. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? We're just returning the, the the brains back. Yeah, uh, you know, we we're, we're putting the brains back where they belong, where they can do the most good. Cool. That's the cool thing about being in this at all is that that, that we get a chance to do some stuff, where we get a chance to contribute the best versions of ourselves to the people. We get a chance to really to really test ourselves and see what we can do. And I saw somewhere somebody made a um, comment about the we're the first people that, that the folks is coming after. But that's kinda cool because when you think about it, we're also the last people to make a stand. Make a stand about freedom. You dig what I'm saying? Okay, now that's who we are. So this is some this is some righteously, courageously brave stuff we doing, and we get a chance to do it all together. That makes us even stronger. And that's all I can think of for right now. Anybody got some questions? Okay, all right. Keep it down now. All right. Anyway, that's about all I can say. If you have any questions for me, just um. WhatsApp me or something, and or call me up, and we can wrap. Anyway, certainly, um, thank you very much, sir, for uh, bringing me on to say something that was hopefully significant and relevant to the people. Can you hear me at all? Uh, yes, hear you loud and clear. All right, good enough. All right, y'all take care. I'm about to mute myself until I think of something else. Well, I uh, appreciate uh, Chaz. Thank you for uh, sharing and things like that. And also, family, um, all the things that. Give me one more thing. Thank you for sending that document to me, man, with my with my stuff on it. Yeah, perfect. If you want to uh, share it with the rest of the, with the rest of the people, you can. Uh yes, those are things uh, we were talking about earlier, uh, which is. Okay, yes, yeah, you were kind of breaking up in uh, the first. Uh, Quite a bit of part of a good part of me, a good part of the uh, the reception on my end. So, I got pieces and 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 and, and all that stuff. But I figure you can fill me in later. All right, I'm going again. Yeah, just uh, letting everyone know that um, we have our lease. We're organizing along with our land uh, survey and then the land survey. We have to get the the data from the land survey to put in the lease. <coughs> so. And um, the Lands Commission, if there's a mistake or something needs to be changed, you have to resubmit it and things like that. It's um, very painful, honestly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I've gotten more and more back. Um, so we're getting there. So the goal is to create a perfected sis perfect a system where those who are interested in traveling, living, doing business can come and connect with us and we just help them get all these things organized ahead of time. Uh, it's not going to take forever. This is the you know the growing process we're going through for the last 20 months. Um, it's a whole lot we're learning about um, these things, and it's not like what, you know one one or two of us getting a piece of land. It's a whole group, uh, which complicates things a little bit. But at the same time, to building the management and the organization system is what's going to get us uh, where we need to get to. Uh, so right now that's the best thing we can do. We can practice the flow of how we're doing things. So far so good. Uh, things have gotten this better as the period of time go has gone along. But I'm uh, trying to hear back from some or a few other people. We have a lot of people on the call, and I don't want to be just be talking. I'm trying to get people questions, feedback, especially from uh, current members. Hi, Bomani. This is Ahuva. Uh, greetings, Ahuva. Uh, how are you? 
I'm good. It's good to hear you. Uh, I, I just wanted to commend you on, on the job you're doing. You're doing a great job. We, we kind of listen to you in silence, but uh, we, we monitor you and, and, and follow you, so you're doing a great job, but don't ever be discouraged. Uh, yes, I appreciate the energy. I just uh, trying to do what it takes to <laughs> escape from this um, place to where you can enjoy the freedom you need to enjoy. Yes, uh, I understand. Uh, yeah. I have a question, though. Um, okay. um, as far as the, once the uh, property is developed, is there going to be like um, some source of upkeep? And um, I don't know if there's a. Um, if uh, uh, any type of, uh, I know you said there was not going to be a, a HOA, but um, how is the upkeep going to be done as far as the grounds and things like that? Yeah, um, the, the numbers that we talked about in the past was about 20 to $30, but probably closer to $20 a month. Um, and uh, we're just working those things out to pay for what it takes to maintain the property and then us uh, taking time and taking turns volunteering because uh, that's what's going to make this project uh, cost effective. You know, we're going to have to all volunteer on many things from farming to digging to building to cleaning up to maintaining. And then the other thing is um, we're going to have to get to a point where we're talking about the development budget, how we can put our money together to develop a community as far as lights and roads and sewage and things like that. Um, uh, so those are the things we're in the mix of communicating about. Uh, but yes, you do have uh, that cost. Uh, but since you're just building a group, none of those things are like actively because people are paying for their land. So those are things that's not we're not collecting at this moment. Plus, we need to organize uh, getting our bank account uh, there in Ghana and getting a few things set up for us up in Ghana. Okay. Every, yeah, so. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'm going to call you and speak with you personally because um, there is some developments on our end, but I, I want to speak with you personally um, whenever you are available. All right, cool, yeah. So you can just reach out to me and we can communicate. Uh, I'm on WhatsApp, so you can text me when you're flexible and we can talk and connect. That's not a problem. All right, so family, uh, that is it, uh, family, uh, Black South Pan African community. So stay tuned for videos, footage, and other updates that uh, we have. And for those who ever want to talk about things, let's talk. Uh, just trying to have a meeting every once in a while to just share some updates and just a dialogue about uh, what we're going and dealing with. Uh, so next time we communicate, uh, we'll be able to just let everybody know more about our lease, our uh, plot of land uh, survey, um, the utilities, the infrastructure, and so on, and how we're going to you know, work on different financing. And for those with certain backgrounds, um, you, know, you can just reach out as far as this, uh, who have just different ideas of how to fund certain aspects of our project where we don't have to just come out with everything just out of our pockets open to different ideas. But that's it, uh, family. I want everyone just to just enjoy the rest of the night. And I would definitely just keep everybody posted. Uh, that's all I've been doing since we started is just send out emails and send out updates so nothing uh, will, will change. Uh, just looking for more commitment for phase two. Uh, Philson, uh, go ahead. Oh, uh, no. Um can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear that. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, I would just, I guess, press this in, thing. Yeah, I want to echo what the last person said. Um, well, the, the work that you're doing is a pretty good job and important as well. And um, I, uh, I do follow the videos on the internet. I saw you in, in Gambia, and uh, so it, it, it's pretty good. Uh, one question I'd like to ask though is, um, in terms of the building. Um, the architect drawings and so on. Do we have to have um, Ghanaian, which, or we can get those things from here? The architect, the, the drawings, or so, or we must use Ghanaian as architect. And if, if that's the case, um, uh, do you have a list of the architects down there? 
I have a list of builders that you can work with that have architects and things like that. But no, you don't have to get everything there in Ghana. You can bring your own builders. You can bring your own building plans, all that good stuff. The main thing that we get you is a survey and get you a survey so he can show you the layout of your land so you can start building. Okay, because um, uh, I just got a couple, at least within a year, I want to look at that. And I want to go and come with, uh, with you, I think it's next year, um, in March or somewhere like that, you go to Ghana. Yeah, last time I was in Ghana in uh, December 2020 and 2019, and I'm heading back um, next week. Okay, um, when your next trip, I, I, if this is in next year, uh, about uh, mid year or something like that, I'll be coming along. Uh, yeah, what I have on schedule is May and December uh, for this year, and the same for next year, which is not on the website, but that's the schedule I have for working to get to Ghana. Okay, I'll keep in touch I, so, so that I can be aware and set up for it. Yeah, and um, the website is always like, updated on all the tours and all of the investment uh, community information. Okay, yeah, man. Um, okay, so keep up the good work. All right, well, appreciate your energy, brother. You take care. All right, so family, the line is open for the last question before we close the night. All right, let me see what's in the chat. All right, let's chat. So, all right, everyone, everyone, appreciate your energy, family. So everyone take care, enjoy your night, and I will keep you posted on everything. And anyone that want to join our WhatsApp group, just reach out to me. Uh, so we can get your paperwork and get to know who you are, then we'll add you to our group. So everybody, good night. Uh, you take care. Take care. Bye bye. Good night, brother. I did go. Everybody's unmuted. So good night. Take care. Not everybody else. Good night, George. Good night. Good night. Good night. My brother just Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And good night. Good night, child. Good night. Good night. Good night. Don't come now, but that's right. That's right. It's only one phone. You have to do it. You have to do it. You have to do that.